نوع الأربعين نوع الاعتكاف نوع الخلوة نوع العزة نوع الرياضة نوع السلوك نوع الصيام لا يتعال العظيم في هذا المسجد ماذا يا رجال الله أعيدونا بعون الله وكونوا عون لنا بالله صنع الله بفضل الله طريقتنا الصحبة والخير في الجامعية Our way is companionship and there is goodness in coming together for Allah's way coming together for remembrance of Allah for learning for seeking the ways <coughs> To be better servants. Mala yassal awliya say Shah Abdullah Faiz Nasan say Shah Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani say Shah Muhammad Adil Rabbani. And now we are Akhiru Zaman people. Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that at the end of times the ilm, knowledge will be lifted. Wisdom will be lifted, mercy will be lifted from dunya. But they asked him, how, how is the ilm lifted? Yani people will, uh, how people, um, knowledge is knowledge, you know. How is that lifted? He said, it's lifted by when, 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 when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when one alim dies, Allah is not replacing them with somebody uh, with that kind of knowledge. So every generation, that knowledge is dwindling until we reach now end of times. So the ilm of the first three generations and the taqwa and the piety and the wara and as Imam Shafi'i in his poetry said, his shaykh told him, إِنَّ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ نُورُ وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُهُدَى لِعَاصِي that this knowledge is light and the light of Allah is not given to a disobedient servant. And Imam Shafi'i, since he was seven, his mother, his mother made him another that she will, that this, this boy is for Allah. His father died and he is from, his father is from uh, uh, the cousins of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their lineage. So he is Qurayshi. So his, his mother said that this boy is for Allah and they were poor. But she took him from Gaza in Palestine. Now that's where he was born at the age of seven. She took him all the way to Medina. And she went to the masjid and she gave him to the scholars of them to, to teach him. So since the age of seven, he surrounded, and this is, we're talking the first three Qurun. The first three generations of Islam, the ones the Prophet ﷺ said, خير القرون يقرني. The best generation is my generation, then the one after, then the one after. So the, these are the best human me, beings that ever walked the earth, those three generations. The caliber of the type of people that existed, these three generations, they're the best. And Imam Shafi'i is from them. And he spent time with the ulama of Medina. And the ulama of Medina... At that time, يعني, you can imagine what kind of sohbah uh, he had with them. Spent his entire life in ilm and wara and taqwa. And one time he saw something that he wasn't supposed by accident. And he went to his shaykh. He started having problems memorizing because he was, he was a prodigy. Uh, people used to come to the gatherings of Imam Shafi'i to hear his Arabic. Linguists, Nahawiyin, people of, uh, they used to come to hear the eloquence of his Arabic. If they had a question about a, a, a word or a root or something, they would go to Imam Shafi'i for it. Yeah? So, that Imam, his memory wasn't the same he felt that, that something was not right. So he went to his shaykh, his name is Waqiya. And he wrote in it in his poetry. He said, سألت واكيع عن سوء حفظي فأرشدني إلى ترك المعاصي وقال إن هذا العلم نور ونور الله لا يهدى لعاصي. I asked Waqiya about, I'm having trouble memorizing. 
So he guided me to leave disobedience. And he told me that this ilm, religion, that knowledge, religious knowledge. Because what is religious knowledge? It's the knowledge of how to be a true servant for your creator. What Prophet ﷺ came to teach us is what? Is not uh, to memorize and parrot. Anyone can do that. Now computers do that. Now you can put a whole uh, encyclopedia of hadith on uh, your device. It's not about that. But the real knowledge is nur. Allah gives to his obedient servants in their hearts. And that's why when they speak, the people in their company, they feel, they feel that fight, they feel that taste in their speech. It's not just empty regurgitating of the knowledge that you've memorized. But it is a knowledge that that person has experienced. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, makes it a light in his heart and from his heart that light, when he talks about what, what he's learned, these things, that light reaches the hearts of the people who are in that company. So, Imagine now 1400 years later, imagine the cesspool, sorry for the description, of Ma'asi we live in, of the uh, sewage, as Mawlana Sheikh Nazim used to say, that people live in, of disobedience. Everywhere you look, everything you do, you see Ma'asi. You know, even people are, their ability to focus is destroyed and demolished. We're jumping from one thing to another, from one distraction to another. So the type of people that live now, what kind of people live now? So when, when Prophet ﷺ was asked, how is the knowledge going to be taken? He's saying it's taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking the people who have that light those people who have that taqwa, have that piety, have that nur, have that obedience, when they're leaving every generation, less. Every generation, less. Until we reach the end of time. And you see it now. You, you see the effect of, of this. You have many eloquent speakers. You have many, many people who can uh, write uh, long papers about uh, small topics, but you sit in their company. What, what state? What happens to your heart in their in their presence in the company? What is your? What do you benefit in terms of not just the knowledge, but actually? Um, yani, their suhbah, what does it do to you? Because there's the knowledge of this, the tongue. But then the state, the state of the person. So when you sit with people of piety, humbleness, for example, people of sincerity, their state, that state of sincerity they are in, rubs off. On the other hand, you could be sitting with the most celebrated scholar, for example. But his state, his knowledge has made him proud. His knowledge has made him, for example, arrogant. And he, is, he has the knowledge, he has the ulum, he has everything. But now he's a proud teacher. So you sit in his presence. Yes, you would fill books of what he's telling you, but at the end of it, also his state of pride, his state of arrogance becomes your state. And you see it. You see it even... Yani, even people uh, through my years of uh, following Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, I've seen this quite often. I've seen the... like. Uh, 
the, the followers of a specific teacher becomes colored by that. Not just, I'm talking, but their behavior, their manners, um, the way they, uh, they act is also colored. Especially if they respect that person or love him then they completely become aligned. So that's why Sahaba is so important, but at the same time, it is very dangerous if it is with the wrong people. So you go, you want to learn your religion, and you end up being with an arrogant scholar, or a scholar of bad manners, bad, and then in his company, your state becomes like his. I've seen this in, even in, in uh, Sufism. You see people, sometimes they, uh, uh, they, become, uh, they become proud on the path, even in Tasawwuf. So the Shaykh gives them a position, or after so many years of being with the Shaykh, uh, their turban becomes like mine and uh, they wear the garb but then they falter in in the 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 most difficult test my Ulana Sheikh Nazim said out of all the bad manners you know pride and jealousy and envy and anger and all he said they're like like the tree of Masiya is, is made from all these bad manners the roots of it are all these bad manners that's the tree of disobedience and in tasawwuf as you are making suruk as you're doing your awrad as you're doing your athkar as you're coming to the zikr as you're learning about yourself as you're moving on the way the shaykh helps you eliminate some of those bad manners. So you realize you have arrogance, you, you realize you have jealousy, you realize you have envy in you, um, as you are put in, the, in different tests by the shaykh. Uh, and so if you are moving, then those things get eliminated. But those who get to eliminate all of them in in tariqa nowadays especially as as my shay Mawlana Sheikh Nazim used to say is are very few because it's a very difficult process and it's very difficult on the ego it's very difficult on um, it's very difficult to carry that pain especially Akhru Zaman people but he said the worst trait the worst one the deepest root of the worst character is love of leadership. Is to want to be boss. And he said that is the last one the Shaykh is able to eliminate in his students. And, and you witness it in yourself first. We're not talking about just other people. <laughs> but you witness that you know, that, that, that the ego is, feels so good when you are over people, you know. And it is so tricky that people, that a lot of people will reach the, to, to that test and they fall head, head first. And we see now so many, um, so many people who are mutasaddirin, who are sitting and teaching, and you see, you see, you see that they are. Um, how do you know? We're not judges over anyone. And how we're not sitting and saying, "Oh, that one has that bad character, and that one doesn't." No, you know how you know. You know by the test of Aulia uh, uh, by um, Sayyidina Sheikh Abu Qalil Jilani. He said, "If you see somebody flying in the air." or walking on water and he is 
doing things contrary to the Sharia ah or the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, then you know that one is following Shaitan. Because it's not a feat. I mean, you know, non-Muslims can do these things. Yogis can do these things. Even Dajjals are doing these things. Now you see videos of people walking across the uh, river uh, in the UK. What is it? The Thames? 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 Some, some guy was, uh, people were watching, he, he walking on water. So that is not proof that you are a good servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a true servant. It's not proof that um, the proof is in your adherence to the Kitab and Sunnah. The proof is in your adherence to the way of Prophet وسلم, in your adherence and commitment to following his way, which is the way of humility, the way of mercy, the way of selflessness, the way that is the proof. Our way is completely tied to the Kitab and Sunnah. So I, you see, you see people, you see people, for example, you see people saying, okay, when you stand to pray, close your eyes and imagine. Okay, you're a big sheikh. Where in the Sunnah it says, when you stand to pray, close your eyes? In which madhab? All the madhahib, they say, when you look at the place of sajda, when you, when you read, where you close your eyes and imagine you're in front of Kaaba and imagine you're... And they go so far. They go so far to say, I have saw, I've seen one person who has big following saying, if you see, whatever you see in your imagination is real. So you close your eyes and imagine you're in the seventh heaven. If you see the seventh heaven, then it's real. <laughs> For example, so these takhrifat, that's how you know that they're not following the way of Prophet ﷺ. No one before you, 1400 years, knew this piece of knowledge. You are the only one. Even your sheikh didn't know it. Even your grand sheikh didn't know it. No one. He's the only one. Contrary to the way of Prophet, contrary to the way of Prophet, no problem. Only person. Another one says, there is no bid'ah in ibadah. No bid'ah in ibadah. The opposite is true. That the bid'ah, the Prophet ﷺ, is the bid'ah in ibadah. So if innovation in other than ibadah, like for example, you write, uh, you carry an iPhone, and Sahaba didn't carry an iPhone, that's a new innovation. There's no, uh, there's no problem with that. That's not an innovation that Prophet ﷺ is talking about. كُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ the innovation is, is if you come and Prophet ﷺ had said, this is how you pray, and then you say, no, we change it a little bit. We pray differently. That's the innovation in ibadah of the Prophet. So the, the only innovation that is madhmum, that is bad, is in ibadah. I heard it with my own ears. He's saying there's no innovation in ibadah. No innovation in ibadah. So masakin, and the people surrounding them, yani they speak contrary to the sunnah. They act contrary to the sunnah, not because they maybe believe that they are big shots in their own, but that's, that's not a sign. And people follow them, and uh, they get in trouble. No, we, we are saying astaghfirullah. We... Alhamdulillah, are not claiming to be alims, scholars. So, no, I uh, accompanied the uh, mashayikh, alhamdulillah, learned from them what I learned. My shaykh is testing me, putting me in this position. 
um, as a representing him for zikr, sharing some advice with people, calling them to make salawat on Prophet, and make, but that's it. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna come. And if, if I and if you hear me say anything contrary to the the Sunnah and the way of Prophet Sallallahu tell me. We don't want that responsibility to be from these people. No, keep, keep, uh, keep, keep a humility. So this is dangerous time to be in in this world. It's very dangerous for one's akhirah if you end up with the wrong people. If you end up with the right people, it is the best time. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you tawfiq to sit with humble people, to sit with people who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet, and you spend your time in worship, in ibadah, in, in salawat, in dhikr, with a good group of people, it is, the rewards are endless, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on the way of our master Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Keep us humble, keep us true, and grant us success to be true servants, inshallah. Amin Allah, tawfiq, bihurmatil habib, bihurmatil fatiha.